Welcome. Welcome to The Real with Joseph Latman. I am Joseph Latman. Uh, happy Friday to you guys. I uh, hope you guys are having a good day. Get ready for the weekend. Um, yeah, today's show, guys, I uh, wasn't even planning on doing this today, but, you know, earlier I was outside you know, working, doing what I do. And uh, a lot of times when I'm working, I got my headphones in, like a lot of people, you know, they're outside and usually I have music on or uh, some type of video with relates to me like the anxiety guy or i have a sermon on and today i'm outside i'm working doing what i do like i said and uh all of a sudden this sermon from charles stanley who i've been listening to a lot of lately popped up in my ear and so i just kept it going because it came on i didn't feel like going on to see what it was so i just started listening to it and uh it was like a 20 minute sermon but man this sermon was really good and it <laughs> rang true to a lot of what's going on in my life right now what i've been through but also what a lot of people are going through as well and i think uh it's a great uh sermon about you know it's the title of this today's show temporary pain for long-term pleasure all right and that's the uh the topic for today's show as well temporary pain for long-term pleasure and so this sermon by Charles Stanley is called The Rocky Road to the Will of God. I'm looking at it. Yeah. The Rocky Road to the Will of God. And so, uh, you know, this is, like I said, it rang true to me because a year ago at this time, guys, I was at rock bottom or pretty much damn near towards rock bottom. It was probably about another week or two from today was when I really hit rock bottom. And, uh, but it, I had to go through that. I had to go through that temporary pain. I had to go through that temporary, uh, you know, downfall, rock bottom, whatever you want to call it. And we've all been there. Maybe some of you have been there. I know a lot of people have been there. I've been there. And so, uh, but that's why I think it's important now for me to share what I've been through because right now, uh, you know, there's somebody else out there right now that was exactly where I was a year ago. And yes, I'm still making strides in my own journey i'm still not where i completely want to be yet but i'm not where i was and that's most importantly and i've done some things uh starting this podcast i've done some things in the past hell i've done some things in the past month the month of august has been a well let's say oh, well yeah about a month i would think for a second but uh i mean the month of august has been a pretty good month i've had my ups and my downs not in a bad way i think more just like wins and lessons more growth and uh, done a lot of things out of my comfort zone. Uh, you know, re- reconnected with people. I've uh, interacted with people I'd never thought I'd interact with. I've, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of things. I've even, you know, tried to grow this show more in more ways by having different guests on. And, uh, you know, it's been a pretty good month, but I'm also pushing more now, I'm really growing out and expanding more. And so uh, I'm just going to stop talking because. I want to get into the sermon today because that's why I'm here. Like I said, this wasn't even planned. Uh, but I heard the sermon. I said, you know, let me come on real quick. Give you guys a little quick message for the weekend. You can sit on think about. Uh, now, this isn't I can't do the actual like video version of this. There is a video version of this on on their page in Touch Ministries. But I'll get copyrighted and flagged, and I don't need that in my life. So uh, I did go online, though, and I found an audio version. It's got a picture up there. So when you listen to this, maybe listen to this when you're outside. I'm going to pop up during it. At certain. He's going to make certain points uh, that I'll pop in and maybe comment on just to give a little more detail uh, from my perspective. Um, but, yeah, this is something you got to really turn your ears up and listen to. And if you really want to get invested in this, I will get a paper to pen right now and really write some things down and write down some of the key points you hear and see, you know, I think it's a good reflection maybe for your own life that we could all do, including myself and look, okay, this is maybe I need to do a little bit better of, you know, it's always good to stop and check up because I'll give you a hint of what he says here. One thing he says here in his sermon that strikes, that struck with me more than anything was the devil's, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but the devil's biggest weapon against us nowadays one of the biggest weapons is busyness we get too busy we're doing way too much and we get too busy for god we don't spend time with god we don't take care of ourselves we don't do any self-care for ourselves which i think a lot of self-care is feeding your spirit your soul with god connecting with god you know that's that's real peace in this world that's the ultimate peace in this world and joy and grace and 
love and you know everything and power and so uh yeah let's just get to it but like i said maybe get a pen and paper out this uh will also be slightly sped up just a little bit because i don't want to drag this out too long i want this to be like quicker video today uh quicker uh, show for you guys so uh yeah let's just get to it One of the most important subjects in the Bible is the will of God. And unbelievers sort of scoff at the idea, and believers oftentimes ignore it. But the truth is, every single day, you and I are either living in the will of God or out of the will of God. It's a choice we make, and it's a choice we make on the basis of the decisions we face in life, and we face many of them. So when you think about the will of God for your life, you think about how you go about discovering His will, what you do when you understand what his will is. Do you obey him or do you not? Or you just think about it? And do you wonder why you get yourself in trouble sometime and you think, well, if I'd have just thought about so-and-so? Very important subject. So what I want to title this message is this, as I thought about it, the rocky road to the will of God, because it's not easy. And there's stumbling blocks along the way if we're not careful. And what I'd like to do is to simply tell you about the obstacles and let you ask yourself the question, is that why I'm not seeking the will of God for my life? Have I, have I neglected one of the most important aspects of my life? So I have a number of points, and I hope you get them all down. And uh, so I want to begin with number one. One of the rocky roads is simply this, and that's self-will. We want our way. It's a matter of pride and selfishness on our part. We don't want to ask God about a lot of things. We just like to do it and then ask God to bless it. But that's not his way of operating. And people say, well, nobody's going to tell me how to live my life. That's a very foolish attitude because none of us, not one of us is sufficient within ourselves to live out the will of God for our life. Nowhere in the Bible does he say it's a smooth road, but it is a rocky road. The thing, there's so many stumbling blocks to doing the will of God. You face them on your job. You face them at home. And you look at your life and you think about how many times have you stepped out of the will of God? How many times have you almost missed the will of God for your life? So it's a rocky road. And I simply want to mention some of those rocks and self-will is the first one. No, I just want to stop because I like what he said there about you know, putting off the will of God. And when I go back, when I think back to where I was a year ago from this point uh, today, uh, around this time, man, I was very much not <laughs> doing the things I needed to do. I was not much of my scripture every day or really throughout the week. And I'm not, listen, let me get something straight. I don't want to act like I'm up here like I'm just, just you know, goody two-shoe Christian every day. I'm not. But I've also been at points in my life where I've <laughs> turned away from it where I shouldn't have. And I saw the end result of that. And so I kind of had a wake up call on what it's like to veer away from God. And, uh, you know, that's why I tried to make sure because the pain was too much. There was nothing. It's like you said that people try to go out and do things on their own and they try to figure it out on their own. And a lot of times if you do that, yeah, you might do well for a little bit, but it always comes to an end at some point. At some point it comes to an end. And so and a lot of people, the longer it goes on and the, the harder it will be when it ends, they, they crash. Excuse me. They go down in a down in a downward spiral, and they just get get themselves in a deep hole with depression, anxiety, uh, you name it. And so, unfortunately, some people take even deeper roads, which is you know unfortunate. But uh, again, you know, like I said, I look back at where I was a year ago. But through all that, though, I had to. God allowed me to go through that for a reason. He allowed me to go through that because He had to teach me a lesson, and He had to. Show me also, because during that time, even though I had a lot of bad days and a lot of, and when I say not every day was horrible, but I had a lot of, I didn't have much peace inside of me. Uh, but even through all that, though, he also showed me uh, how strong I really was. And especially when it came to my health anxiety, because a lot of you don't know if you knew this, I've had in my past, my anxiety, a lot of it was health anxiety related because it's kind of what I grew up around and just kind of the habits I learned and just uh it just 
I had at a very young age. I didn't know how to handle it. So it kind of just took off from there. But, and I'm not going to ramble too long, but, uh, you know, through all that though, like, you know, when I'd ride my bike, there be, there was days last year in 2021 where I would, uh, I had this, just days where I'd have a lot of anxiety and panic. And so my counter that was, I would just go bike like crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, like nuts. Sometimes in t- extreme conditions. And I don't know what it was, but it taught me though. I don't do a lot of that now because some of it was a little too much and I was very tired. I wore myself out towards the end of that. But what it showed me though was how strong I was because a lot of, I faced a lot of my hypochondriac fears during those times and my worst fear never happened. And each time it actually helped me become stronger. Number one, I got a lot healthier and I shed a ton of weight, but I also, uh, you know, mentally I gained a lot of wins and I started to build off those wins. Now, I, the problem with me was I wasn't going to the root cause of things. I was putting those things off and hoping things, hoping things would get better. And that's the biggest thing here I'm trying to get at. Are you hoping or do you know? Do you believe? Because there's a difference. You know, hoping is kind of like being out of the will of God. It's like, well, I hope things get better and, you know, my life will turn around and, you know, all, all these things will go away. Everything will just disappear, just like that. And that's not how it works. In order to get over things, you have to confront things. You have to face things. You have to make peace with things, with people. And that's the key. And you also have to align yourself with God's will. When you do that, when you align yourself with God's will, man, things just start to open up to you. And that may not be as fast or as uh, quick as we want it to be or maybe what we want it to be sometimes, the exact things, but it's what's best for us. And ultimately, in the end, it's what's going to give you the most happiness and fulfillment. And so, uh, yeah, but I love what he said there. I'm going to stop rambling, and uh, let's get back to it. Maybe. A second one is the influence of other people. Other people are quick to tell you how you are to live your life how you can make decisions, what your decisions ought to be, how you spend your money, who you marry, how you raise your children. They can, they can tell you all kinds of reasons of how to live your life. But the truth is, oftentimes you're listening to the wrong voices because God is willing to show you what you need to know about any area of your life if you're willing to listen. They want to place their opinion above God's opinion, and they say, well, now listen, when somebody says, if I were you, watch it. They're not you to begin with. They can't be you. They don't know what God's plan is for your life, and they don't know what God's up to in your life. They may think that what's happening in your life is terrible, and God thinks it's perfectly on time. A third one of those obstacles is ignorance of God's principles. Naturally, you can't walk in the will of God if you don't know the principles of God. So let me just mention a few. For example, one of those important principles to walk in the will of God is learning Listen, learning to wait on God. God's timing is a major issue in living the Christian life. And then a second one is this. Learning to trust God and leave all the consequences to Him, which is a foreign idea to the world. What do you mean, trust God and leave all the consequences to Him? That's what faith's all about. We walk a difficult road oftentimes. The will of God is never promised to be easy. We'll face obstacles in life, but we keep moving in the direction of obedience to Him. And then, of course, one of those principles is that God will supply all of our needs. Most people don't believe that. They think they've got to supply them. No, God will supply all of our needs that when we're walking in the will of God, we're going to have everything we need. Now, that's another great point there because like, I like I love what he said. What he said is 100% correct. God will supply all of our needs. And a lot of times, this is what I t- talk about the balance between doership and allowance and a lot of times with doership people feel like i have to do 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 and go 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 and go get everything and uh you know i have to force things to happen you're forcing things to happen you're forcing what you want to happen when you're not allowing though you're not where's there, when there's not a lot of faith there and i've been here trust me i've been there but you're not allowing sometimes you just need to allow Sometimes when you pray, when you go in there and pray, a lot of times you want to do all the talking. And this is something I've had to learn recently. Maybe you need to go in there just and listen. 
and listen to what God's telling you and listen to just allow things to come to you. You know, sometimes part the best teacher in life, and I posted this on my Instagram yesterday in a clip from my uh, show with my one of my best friends in life, Zach. Uh, you know, him and I both through once some you know things in our high school years and then during college years, but a lot of our ex- growth was through experience, but also uh, going through those trials where we had to, you know, especially for, you know, I can speak for myself. You know, I know he would probably say the same. You have to sometimes you just have to let go and allow things to happen and just put your head down and go day by day, step by step, and just take it one day at a time. But a lot of people they get too impatient, and trust me, I know. It's very easy to get impatient, and like I said, my last show with we talked about, uh, you know, I can't remember transitioning. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot transitioning in life. Uh, you know, that's kind of this goes hand in hand with that today a little bit too. Going in transition, right? And so you want to go from a bad place to, like it says on the bottom, a pleasant place, long term pleasure. But there's a middle ground in between. And the middle ground's neutral, bad to neutral to pleasant. A lot of people try to go from bad to pleasant, and they skip the in between. You know, it's like trying to build a house, but you forget all the details and all the other things. You put up all the basic things, but the house is going to fall apart again because you didn't you didn't build the foundation properly. You didn't do all the in between work. You don't have any. You know, it's like waking up. Think you're gonna win the lottery one day. It's hopeful wishing. It's hopeful thinking. It's wishing. You know, it's that's what a lot of people do. And I hope this makes sense because uh again, I've been there. But again, think about that. The balance between doership and allowance. And when you're trying to constantly force things, relationships, uh, all kinds of things. And you know, there's things in my life I still don't have yet. I never had had others. Uh, Things I want, sure, absolutely. There's people I'm interested in, absolutely. I'll be 100% honest. Uh, but I have to allow those things to happen. Yes, I do put, there's things I'll have to do. I understand that. But, you know, I've, like for instance, I've never dated. And so uh, when that time comes, whatever it is, who knows what it could be? I don't know. I mean, I'm prepared, but. You know, I'm not. I can't sit around and think about it 24 seven. Like, I, it's. I if I don't have this, then, uh, you know, if I don't have really, I'm not in a relationship. Like, I gotta go find somebody right now. No, I'm very selective in what I, in a lot of things I do. But I'm also not just gonna get with somebody just to get with somebody, because that's to me that's, you know, you're trying to force things. You're trying to, it's almost like you're trying to live up to a, a worldly standard. You're, you're leaving God out of it. When you put God in the mix. Things start to organically, naturally happen, and he'll lead you to the person you're looking for. And you know, could I have some ideas right, an idea right now, possibly? But I've also had to. It's been a challenge for me though to balance that out between allowing him and you know focus on growing myself. And so, because when the time comes, you know, one day I plan on getting married. I want to be the best man for that woman, the best husband for her and the best father to our children right i want to be the best version of myself doesn't mean i'm perfect but i'm always going to try to be the best version of myself and continue to grow and give everything i have and so uh you know it takes time though it takes time that's the whole thing it takes time it takes patience but you know remember think about that again i'm gonna say it again doership versus allowance so now you need to allow more things more than you do things and that's hard to do but you got to do it so uh yeah i'm gonna just gonna stop ranting and get back to the video and then think about this walking in the will of god you only take one step at a time when you get in your automobile at nighttime and you're going to take a trip you cut on the lights and you can only go as far as those lights will shine watch this the will of god's not going to show you the whole picture of your life He's going to have all of us walking a step at a time, trusting him, obeying him, and believing, watch this, believing that what I can't see around the curve, God's already seen, and he'll get me there at the right time. Very important to keep the timing 
of God's will in our life. And then one of the other obstacles is willful known sin in our life. Now, you may want to jot down these four things because this is what it's all about. First of all, sin deafens our ears to the voice of God. When you choose to disobey God, you no longer hear God as clearly as he desires to show you and to speak to your heart. The second fact here is that it blinds our eyes to the vision of God. We don't know the will of God. Willful sin in our life blinds our eyes to the vision of God of what he's up to in our life. And naturally, you're not going to be happy about your life if you don't know where you're headed. Then the third thing is it hardens our heart to, to our awareness of God. Disobedience to God always hardens your heart. And this is why people stumble along the way because they're allowing sin in their life that's a distraction. And, and God's best is ahead of them, and they get sidetracked because they were allowed sin in their life. And then how many times have I heard people say, well, I just don't, want, I just don't understand why God treats me the way he treats me. No, it's, it's how you're treating him. You're not listening to him. You're not obeying him, and things are not going to work out for you. There's no promise in God's word that he's going to bless your sin, your disobedience, and your indifference to him. Life's just not that way. And then, of course, sin dulls our conscience to the Word of God. When people say, well, I read the Word of God and it doesn't say a thing to me, it's because you're living in disobedience to God. You're not listening to Him. You have your own mind and heart made up. And when you think about this, anything that does what? Deafens my ears to Him, blinds my eyes to Him, hardens my heart to Him, and dulls my conscience to Him, I'm in trouble. And when you're... Now, I just want to stop real quick because... I love what he said there. The biggest thing I take from what he said there, when he said, "You're con you're you're in trouble. If you're not in the will. You're not in the will of God. You're not allowing yourself to. Uh, you're not allowing God to work through you. You're almost denying God. You're putting God off. You're very vulnerable. And man, I couldn't looking around nowadays. The two examples I could think of. One in my own life, which would be with my health anxiety, for instance. You know. You can drive around anywhere in town nowadays. And maybe forget health anxiety. There's a lot of things that we worry about in our society. You can go around town. What do you always see? Advertisement, billboards, on the TV, constantly. It's just like they put pressure on you. to, Hey, you need to do this. Hey, what about this? Think about this. Think about that. It's constant information that we're almost overloaded with. And science, we're not even aware of it. It's just like subconsciously happens. And it's like. You may not think about it at the moment, but later on it'll pop in your head because maybe it's something you saw earlier, and right? And so that, and then spiritually speaking too, the enemy's really attacking a lot of people. Look at our music, you know, uh, a lot of our music now is just, you know, the lyrics are just, I mean, they're just satanic, some of it. I mean, you just listen to it. It's like, number one, I don't know who told these people this was real music. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but this is what they're paying people to do. And you know, I don't like to use this term a whole lot, but a lot of these people out there are just pushing agenda. They're like useful idiots. And I don't mean that in a. I hope it doesn't sound harsh. And I don't mean that in a harsh way, but they're putting out an idiotic. Maybe that's the wrong word. They're putting out a horrible message, especially to youth, to the kids, and they're just being. They're useful in it. They. This is a lot of these. Uh, big corporations, big people, big show. This is what they're paying these, I guess you'd call them new rappers. I don't know what you want to call them. Not all, but you know, just look at the music and in, in entertainment industry alone. Just the stupid stuff they put out nowadays. And it's just like, this is the stuff we listen to. This is what we watch. People think this stuff's real. And they really believe it. And the people try to act like it and be like these people. And it becomes their thinking. You're very vulnerable and a lot of it, like I said, is just the music. It, even the, it's just satanic what we push out there nowadays. It's anti-God, and I mean, you're very vulnerable as well. I mean, nothing's safe any nowadays. There's so many these hack accounts. These there's so much just temptation in different ways nowadays out there as well. I mean, like for instance, my social media account on Instagram. I keep it public because I share a public show so people can access but it's just like it's just great you get these weird these like uh, weird people that follow you 
and it's just so much garbage. It's just like I don't even look at it anymore. I don't pay attention to it. I try to go in and clean it out the best I can, remove people off my page. And, but it's just like it's insane just how much just crap we're surrounded with. And so, with all that being said, you better <laughs> protect yourself from the worldly mindset. And what does worldly mindset mean? Worldly mindset means outside of the will of God. It's not doesn't involve God. That's what worldly means. Because the God of this world is the devil. And so anything involved with this world, worldly mindset, doesn't uh, thinking and values, leaves God out of it. And so you better protect yourself from all these things going on nowadays because uh, and protect yourself by allowing, like he said there, all the things he said. I'm not going to list them all because he just said them, but, you know, just feed your soul with God. Feed your mind with God the best you can. When you make this, a lot of your decisions, try to look at it through the lens of God, not what other people think or want you to do. And so, uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. But let's get back to it. Out of the will of God, this is what happens. You begin to sense that something's not right. You wonder why. Don't look somewhere else. Look within your own heart to see what's going on in my own life. Do I really and truly want to know and to walk in the will of God? And then, of course, one of those obstacles along the way is doubt. Because living the Christian life is not easy, it's easy to doubt. And when we doubt God, what happens? We make wrong decisions. So if I doubt him, what am I doubting? I'm doubting. Let's think about this. Analyze it for a moment. If I'm doubting God, what am I doubting? I'm doubting that God has a will for me personally. He may have some general will, but not for me personally. Yes, he does. I'm doubting that God will make his will known. Well, why should God make his will known to me personally? Because he loves us. Then we doubt what we are hearing from God. Well, I must not be hearing from God because that sounds too good. I've had people say that. So we doubt him. We doubt that we can do what he requires of us. And oftentimes, this is where people step out of the will of God. God requires something of you, and because you doubt that he will enable you to do it, you step out of the will of God, you get ahead of him or behind him, things don't work right, and you say, see, I trusted God, and it didn't work. No, you didn't trust God. You didn't obey him. You weren't on his schedule. And if you'll think about it, every morning you get up, every day is different. But as a follower of Jesus, every day is different, except for one thing. We have him all day long to guide us, to lead us, to show us the way, to point us to those stumbling blocks along the way. It is a rocky road. There are many difficulties in walking and living in the will of God for your life. We doubt that we can do what he requires. And you remember when God came to Gideon to tell him what he wanted to do? He said, who am I? Have you ever said that to God? Sometimes when God makes a promise, because we judge him by how we see ourselves, we say, God, I could never do that. I, I can never preach. I can never sing. I could never fulfill that particular position uh, in my job. I, I could never do that. Who are you listening to? You're not listening to God. You're listening, you're listening to the devil's desire to cause you to doubt what is oftentimes the most beautiful part of God's will. He has something for you in the future. You can't figure it out. You don't think you deserve it. And so you give all kinds of excuses for disobeying God. We doubt it because we don't have the facts. The facts are God loves each one of us individually. He has a plan for our life. He'll walk us through that plan. He'll provide everything we need. There'll be difficulty, hardship, and pain, and suffering, and loss, and all of that God will turn for our good if I recognize the source of it. All difficulty and hardship and trial doesn't come from the devil. God allows things in our life to do what? To grow us up, to mature us in areas that we're not mature. And sometimes people trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, and then great difficulty comes into their life. Now watch this. That difficulty God allows in order to do what? Shape them, mold us, make us, change us, eliminate stuff in our life that shouldn't be there. We take it all personal and say, well, God doesn't love me. It doesn't really work because look what's happening. Look at the Apostle Paul. Look at all of the... I just want to stop real quick because he... Two things there, doubt and what he said there at the end about what I took it as doing something new, right? But let's start with doubt real quick. 
I like how you said there. Whenever something, the, some, sometimes the biggest thing in God's will for you, you have the most doubt about. And I had that with this show. I put this show off for, a, I don't even call it, it wasn't even really a thought, really. I never had the name for it, nothing. But for a long time, I, I thought about doing a podcast, especially last year. But I kept putting it off. I had a lot of doubt about it, even up until the day I did it. Even when I was doing that first episode, and even some episodes after, I still have doubt. You know, I start to think, oh, gosh, what are people going to think? Am I saying the right things? Am I, you know, am I, am I doing the right, am I look like an, all that crap in your head, it's doubt. But what I've come to realize, man, is there's no greater feeling than when you say your truth, number one. And number two, uh, the reaction I've got for so many people privately and might be running people and uh, the reconnection I've had with people, it was all worth it. If I got to be able to, if I had to put myself out there to hopefully inspire somebody else that I know uh, to come forward, whatever their testimony is, whatever they've gone through, whether it's anxiety or whatever it is, that's great because we need more of it. We don't have enough people sharing their te- testimony, especially people my age. And not to pick on people my age because we're only, we're very young. We're only in our early 20s. Some people maybe not have, have really. We, I really haven't. We still really haven't gone through a whole lot yet. But uh, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to, if you see something wrong out in society, speak up for it. Like, who cares? Ultimately, because you don't want to get to a, a, the day where <laughs> you were called a coward by God. I know I don't, and I try not to. And do I have my moments where I think twice and it looks scary? Absolutely. But... What I've learned just by doing this alone, uh, you know, and, and it it's it's only been four months. It's still small. It's going to keep growing, I hope. But uh, wherever this goes down the road, I'm never going to change my mindset of why I do this. Because why I do this, what's your why? And my why is I hope to inspire people to do the you know, to share their story to help others, but to put themselves out there because I want people to feel what it's like to see the, feel that kind of inner freedom that I've felt. And yes, I still have my own personal things like anxiety with, you're always going to be anxious though. Like, like I still have my own things with anxiety and panic and uh, you know, my own things I'm growing through, but fear is a natural part in us. It's a normal mechanism. It's how you make a relationship with that, how you respond to things differently. And my response to a lot of things has changed dramatically in a year. And so, but I want other people to feel that as well. And a lot of that too is putting yourself out there, you know, because why do a lot of people, what holds a lot of people back, what held me back for a while was sheltering yourself, you know, staying in this little tiny little cubby hole, cubby hole. And, and I will try to hide everything about me when I'm out in public. I put on this image, like everything's great. You know, life is good. And, you know, I, I have no problems in my but deep down inside, there's a lot of pain, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, and a lot of things you really want to do, but you won't do it. And so uh, there's a lot of inner conflict, and I've been there. And so, you know, if I can help somebody else get to that point where they can get through that, it, that's all worth it for me. That's my why. You know, that's that's what I hope. And so I hope, what do you guys, if you're watching this, Start your own podcast and hope it takes off and grows to be the biggest one there is. If you got a good story behind it and a good message to share with people, to help people, you know, what do we do in that? We don't get out and help somebody, go out and help a cause, you know, do something. You got to get back in some way. And so, whether it's through your knowledge or your actions, your time, donation, just try to get, start trying giving back because what I'm ultimately getting at is I think the best therapy you can give to yourself is helping others in some way because it's the most christian thing that that's what i think what god wants us to do more than anything you know obviously preach the gospel and save souls but also uh showing our character christ-like character as well and so man when you start to do that though it also it it will help draw you closer as well you'll start to grow you start to learn more things about yourself and how capable you are and uh, yeah, man. So uh, let's get back to it. Major characters of the scripture. Look at the difficulty they went through. 
all of which God used to do what? To accomplish his purpose and to mold and make men and women godly. And remember, this is always God's goal. God's goal is not to please you. God's goal is not to give us everything we want. God's goal is to fashion us like unto the likeness of Christ. So when there's doubt, doubt usually heads us in the wrong direction. So ask yourself the question, as best you know your life, are you living a life of obedience to Christ? You have the job that he gave you. You dress like a believer. You spend your money like a believer. In other words, your goal is to follow the leadership of the Lord in your life. Could you say, as best I know my heart, I'm living a life, believing and trusting the Lord will guide me every step of the way. He wants to. He desires to. He's planned to. And the outcome of our life is the result of whether we follow his will or not. It's not easy because there are many obstacles, and that's what I'm doing, and I'm just listening to them. And one of them is, we said, feeling of unworthiness as Gideon. And look at Moses. When God came to Moses, and Moses listened to what God told him he wanted him to do, he's mm, 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 not me. I can't speak. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I wonder how many of God's servants stepped out of God's will early in their life because they told God they couldn't speak, couldn't sing, couldn't do this, couldn't do that, w wouldn't make it in that job. Listen, don't underestimate. Watch this carefully. Don't underestimate what he thinks you can do because he's there to help you get it done, help you to become the person he wants you to be. So don't make decisions based on how you think. Make decisions based on what has God called you to do. He's going to do whatever he knows is best for us. Okay, hold on. I got to fast forward just real quick because there's like a little weird pause. But yeah, I love what he said there. And I think, too, as I fast forward this, like I said earlier, uh, for another example, like I said, I never dated. So I could easily, I can go out there and, I mean, let's be honest, guys. You can go out there right now. You can find somebody that's just willing to do whatever. I, I know people that do that. That's their life. That's their that's what they do. That's their MO. But that's not me. That's not what I want to do. I don't like that lifestyle. That's not who I am. But, uh, yeah, I'm not just trying to go out and just get with somebody. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm using this as an example, by the way. But this could be relative to, you. like I said, dating, friendships, people in your own family, your job, your career. You know, have standards, have values. And, for instance, like when I said i kind of selective, that's not like I'm like, no, you got to be X, Y, and Z. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Because you can point out a lot of flaws about me. But that's what makes us, that's the balance. That's why we're flawed as human beings. But that's how God made us. That's the way God made us perfect in his own image. People have different quirkiness and different characteristic traits about them that you like, that maybe you find attractive, right? And so, but the biggest things for me is, are they, you know, do they give it all for God? Will they not, because uh, we might hit some times here, in our lifetime, we've seen some things happen where you might have to make a choice between God or the world. And you might lose everything if you pick God. Are you willing to do that? You know, that's the kind of person I'm... Because for me, it's not a not a, a choice. Yeah, it might seem scary. And some people say, oh, that's easy to say. No, I know where I'm going when I die. And that's never going to change. And... You know, this life here is short. It's brief. You worry about now or you worry about your eternity, right? And so, but, uh, you know, like I said, if Christ can go through, or if Christ can go through what he went through on the cross, you know, and all the pain he went through, I got it pretty good. And that's just my mindset. And I've said that on the show before. I heard it from my one of my good mentors, Jason Whitlock, a guy I look up to. And, that's what he said. I heard him say that years ago, and I've always stuck with rain true with me and stuck with me because that's my mindset. If Christ can go through, he went through on the cross, I got it good. There's people out there right now, I can go five, ten minutes down the street from me, I could see a whole row of homeless people out there. And sometimes I sometimes I'll talk and stop and when I'm out biking and stuff, try to give them some money if I gotta, you know, help them out. But sometimes, but uh you gotta be careful. But you know. There's people out there that have a way worse than you. And so, again, with all that being said, but also, I think I got a little off track here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, like I said, I didn't play this out today, so I'm kind of just rambling as I go. 
But um, let me get back to the point I was trying to make, though. Like I said, being selective and being, uh, you know, having value in yourself. That's really what I was getting at. Just have value in yourself. Uh, but also know that a lot of that, most of your value should come from God. You value through God. If Christ values you, you should value yourself just the way he does. And so, but also I have standards. I, want, I live by his standards, his law. And that's what I'm trying to get at. When I meet somebody, you know, a lot of my, most of my standards, all of them are through how he wants me to pick. And so doesn't mean that to check every box. But the main ones, again, there's certain things you, you should really try to align yourself with somebody that uh, is looking at things from a biblical worldview, especially nowadays. Because it's very hard, more than ever, if you're not, to make it work. Because, not saying you can't, but it's very hard, more than ever, because there's so much out there nowadays. And so much things that are very uh, easily accessible as well and so uh, yeah i think i ranted enough there uh, sorry if i got a little off track there but i tend to do that sometimes and i'm just got a hundred thoughts in my mind but uh yeah let's just get back to the video provide everything we need to accomplish his will and purpose for our life didn't say it was an easy road and many people backslide now what i mean by that is they just get back into sin they slip back into sin, and it's not so much a slipping as a matter of choosing to make a decision to do what you used to do that God delivered you from because you don't think you can be the person God wants you to be. But remember this. There's no place in the Bible where God says is his word that if one of his children sins, that's it. Finish. No. Why did he say if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness? All along the Christian way, we're going to make mistakes. And we'll sin at times. And God has given us the assurance that he, he doesn't make us an outcast because we disobey him, because we falter somewhere along the way. We're not all as strong as the other person maybe at times. And so we make mistakes, choose to disobey God. We pay the consequences. What do we do? Walk away? No. Ask God to forgive us sincerely and honestly and look to him to give us wisdom and guidance and direction and a warning in our heart to avoid that sin. God is on our side to enable us to become the persons God wants us to be. And no matter, watch this. You say, well, suppose I sin badly. I don't know what you mean by badly, but I can think of a few things. But let me just say this. You can't sin so badly God won't retrieve you. But you can sin so badly you'll wish you hadn't. Because God has a chastising hand. Watch this. But you know what he's doing? He's loving us back unto his will. He's not going to cast you out because you fall to somewhere along the way. And then, of course, one of those excuses we give is busyness. You know, I've just been so busy, I don't have time to go to church. I'm, well, I'm so busy, I don't have time to read the Bible. I'm so busy, I, I whisper I, right before I go to sleep. I whisper a prayer. Busyness is a tool of the devil. We can all claim busyness as an excuse for our sin. Because watch this, we live in a world Watch this. We live in a world that's in opposition to who we are and the kind of life we're living. We have a world that's, that's in opposition to who we are. And I meet people every Sunday, I would say every Sunday, from some other country in the world. And it's interesting, the things that they go through, suffering that they face at times that they're willing to share, difficulty and hardship, that's true everywhere. But because it's true doesn't mean I give up. doesn't mean that I say, well, you know, I, I, I just... I just don't know what I'm going to make it. Not yes, you will. You can make it if you simply rely upon the Lord. The Christian life's not easy, but one thing for certain, it has an awesome eternal end. God's going to take us home to heaven, and he's going to bless us for all eternity, for our faithfulness, for our loyalty, for our devotion, because every single one of us is a living light, a witness of who he is. And so naturally, we're going to make mistakes. Naturally, there'll be times in our life we do what we know is not the wisest thing to do. But there's a price to pay. And so one of the most important things we do is spend time with him. It may be a short period of time or a long period of time. But all of us need that relationship. 
it takes, watch this, it takes time to be a godly person. It takes time to walk with the Lord. It takes time to know his will. But it's a rocky road. And if you're looking for it to get easy, I can tell you this. It doesn't get easy. Some things may not be quite as difficult as others, but there'll never come a time in your life when living a godly life is easy and you can just relax. Next thing you know, you're being disobedient to God. God has given us a life. He's given us an awesome life. He's given us the Holy Spirit to live within us, to walk with us every single day and to face every circumstance we face. Remember this. You may feel like you're alone, but you're not alone. You may feel lonely, but you're not alone. And when you look at your life, for example, and you think, well, what am I missing? Ask yourself the question. Are you missing that precious time he desires to spend with you to give you comfort, strength, wisdom, guidance, direction, support, help, warnings in your life? That's who he is. The Christian life's not easy. It's a rocky road. But having the Holy Spirit to enable us, the presence of God in our life, and all the promises of the Word of God, and this handbook, the Word of God itself, makes living the Christian life life at its best, no matter what's going on around us. Where would you place yourself in the Christian life? Would you say that you are living in the will of God? That you genuinely, honestly attempt to walk in His will for your life each day? Or you find yourself complaining and moaning and groaning and thinking, well, you know what? What's, what's missing in the Christian life? Nothing's missing in the Christian life. Usually you can trace it all back ultimately to when is the last time you sat down and read the Word of God, asked God to speak to your heart, show you His will for your life. You say, I don't even know where to turn. It's amazing. When you don't know where to turn and you turn someplace, you look down and say, oh, looks like it's got your name on it. God knows what you need to read. He knows when you need to read it, and he knows exactly what it takes to encourage your heart. So ask yourself the question, are you satisfied with your Christian life? I don't mean that you think everything is just perfect, but do you feel like you're growing? Then I think of three things that I think. Now, these three things about the, I hope you guys are staying tuned to this. I know it's kind of hard to listen. I like to, when I watch these things, I like to see people on the screen and all that, but you, again, you got to really open up your ears today. I'm trying to get you to really listen and might actually help help you listen more closely. And so these three things he's about to say, really pay attention to these because this is really important here. And so I just want to stop. Maybe you get a pen and paper for this one. All right. So let's get to it. People fear that they'll miss it in the Christian life. Number one, they fear of what God may require of them. And so they think, well, you know, God, God may call me to be a missionary. Don't, don't, don't be concerned about that. God may require me to do this, that, I don't know. Watch this. A loving father will only require, watch this, what he knows you're capable of doing with his help, his strength, and his wisdom. Never require more than he's willing to enable you to do. Secondly, a fear of failure. Say, well, I can't live the Christian life. And none of us can live the Christian life ourselves. And we all fail at times. We ask God to forgive us and move on. But we don't take it for granted, and we don't do it foolishly or haphazardly. If He says if we confess our sin, that means if we agree with Him about it, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, pick us up on the road of, of the Christian life, and move us on. You don't, you don't live in the muck and mire of disobedience and sin in your life. You ask God to forgive you, and you keep moving. No such thing as a sinless saint. We're all contaminated because, listen, the road to living the will of God is a difficult road, and we will stumble unless we lean heavily upon our Lord, listen to Him, depend upon the Holy Spirit. And so we say, well, I'm afraid of what God may require of me, and that uh, will listen. Many things He'll require of you you can't do without Him. But the Holy Spirit came into your life and sealed you as a child of God when you were saved. Therefore, watch this. This is God's indwelling spirit within you to enable you to do any and everything God will require of you. That's God's godly assurance. So if we fail in his heart and he knows when we do fail, he's there to forgive us. And so we fear, for example, of what God may require of us. We fear failure. And then one of the things we fear is criticism. 
How many times have you disobeyed God because you were afraid of what somebody may say to you about your life? It's amazing how Christians can become afraid of other people's criticism. Watch this. You live a godly life, you're going to be criticized. You, you live a godly life and obey God and attempt to walk in His way and His will. You're going to be blessed no matter what. God is on your side, living within you. And listen, God is all about helping you, enabling you, equipping you, entrusting to you the strength and wisdom and guidance you need to live a godly life. Because all of us shine brighter when we're living godly. So let me ask you a simple question. As you look at your life, it is nobody's business but yours. Nobody else can read your mind this morning. Would you say that you are walking in the will of God for your life? Now, I didn't say that you never sin. I didn't say that you never fault. I didn't say that you never make mistakes. I didn't say you had to, con in other words, do you believe as best you know your life? You're walking in the will of God, not, not the past. Now, what you're going to do, but do you believe that best as you know your life, you're walking in His will? And there'll be times in your life when it'll be easier to be obedient than other times. There'll be times when it'll be very difficult for you to be obedient to God because of the circumstances in which you're in that maybe you didn't create, somebody else did. The safest place to be is in the center of the will of God. Nobody else can put you there but you. You say, how do I get there? You ask God to forgive you for your sin, and you tell him that as best you know your heart, Lord, I want you to govern my life, guide my life, show me the way, and Lord, with your help and strength and the power of the Holy Spirit, I'll do my best to follow you. You can't ever promise him you won't ever sin again. You can't promise him perfection. You can't promise him you'll always do right, but you can say, Lord, here's my life. That's my heart's desire, and I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit that you place within me and promise me the power and the strength to be obedient to you. Is that your prayer? Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for grace. Thank you that you understand who we are, where we are, why we are where we are. Thank you for your willingness to step into our lives at any point. Forgive us of our sin, cleanse us, stand us up again, and move us on in the center of your will. I pray that you have spoken to every single one of us this morning. And I pray for that person who came today who doesn't even know anything about your will, who never thought about that you have any real personal interest in their life, that they would surrender their life to you today. Thank you for loving us, Father. Thank you that you never, never, never give up on us. And thank you that to the very moment we pass on from this life to the next, you'll be there because you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we say hallelujah this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, and... Uh... Amen. And I love what he said there in the prayer, too. Thank you, God, for grace, for, for the grace you blessed me with, because uh, and the love and the joy and empowerment and just, uh, yeah, everything, <laughs> man. I can't say it enough because I definitely need some grace, empowerment and joy and peace in my life at certain, a lot of points, especially a year ago. Lord have mercy. But, uh, yeah, I just... Um, you know, just thankful to God for where I am a year later. Uh, and, uh, you know, thankful to people out there like Charles Stanley that will, you know, say a lot of those great things like that that uh, need to be said. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys took something away from today's video. I know it was, I try to make it quicker, but I tend to ramble on sometimes. And, uh, you know, that's just sometimes what I do, especially when I'm by myself. But, um, again, I hope, you know, again, I hope you took something away. And a lot of what I try to do is, share my own personal experience what I'm going through to relate with you guys and to let you guys know, Hey, cause I know there's a lot of people out there going through the same stuff I'm going through. And, uh, so, you know, try to be a voice to let you know, Hey, I'm here. I'm with you. God's with you. There's so many other people that are right where you are. And, uh, 
you know, we're going to get through this together. You got dreams, you have goals and aspirations. Keep pushing no matter how hard it is. There's better days ahead. And uh, I promise that for sure. And uh, you'll start to see some things, man, that you never thought you would see happen. And I'm still heading that direction now. I mean, I've had some things happen in my life. Like I said, a lot of things recently. Uh, but, you know, for me, I'm just so much more peace, so much more grounded, so much more just neutral about a lot of things. Uh, still have my, my days, my moments. Like I said, still got goals and things I'm striving for in my own healing journey. Uh, I got to keep working at, but uh, I'm just thankful I'm not where I used to be, where I couldn't go a block from my house, where I couldn't uh, be home alone, home alone by myself without having a damn near nine level 10 panic attack. Uh, you know, I'm thankful that I'm not sheltered away anymore and kind of was out and just hiding for so long. I'm thankful that, uh, you know, fear no longer dominates me like it used like it, it used to. And so I'm thankful for a lot of things. And I'm thankful for the second chance God gave me in life. You know, t- the sacrifice he made on the cross for me and for you, for all of us, if we accept that, you know, to give us a second chance in life. And so, uh, yeah, man, I'm still here. We're all still here. Whatever you're going through, you're still here. That's all that matters at the end of the day. You're still here. You made it through it. Um, you know, it's like something my counselor, one of my life coaches I talk to all the time to him when he tells me all the time, it's a phrase. You know, when you're going through something, when you get to the end of it, or you're in the middle of a storm, just sit, sit back and tell yourself three words. I am okay. Simple as that. I am okay. And I love what he said at the end of that sermon too, about criticism. You know, who cares people think? As long as you're good with yourself and, you know, you're good with God's good with you. I mean, you know, if God accepts you for who you are, you should accept you for who you are. You know, everybody has something unique about them. He made you made us all unique in his own image. Share your gifts of this world. Be a servant to this world. Right. And so and don't worry about all the other things. Don't worry about I got to get this or I got to get that. Don't worry about it. people say, oh, he doesn't have this yet. He doesn't have that yet. Because, man, people could say that about me some of the things I don't have in my life still. And I could sit around and worry about that and think about, oh, gee, what are people going to think of me? What, you know, uh, like friend, what if I, when I meet somebody, what is their family? Get, what are they going to think? What is, uh, you know, what do my friends think? What do people think about me? Opinions, labels. And we're more worried about labels and opinions nowadays than what's facts and what's real and what's, what's really healthy for us, what's going to help us grow. Sorry about that. What's going to help us grow? And focus on what we need to do to empower ourselves. And, you know, forget labels, forget opinions, forget the criticisms. Be good with you. And worry about you and focus on you. And every and focus and align yourself with God's will, most importantly. And put on God every day. Because I'm telling you, when you do that, all, that other, all the things you want and desire that a lot of people wish they had... Uh, you know, there's a lot of people in that place where they're in a miserable place and they like to sit and poke at other people and complain and are kind of away from God. And that's where they'll be until they make changes. But for you, focus on what you need to do because you're going to get there. I promise. Like I said, there's better days ahead. And so, uh, yeah, man, better days ahead. I'm just going to put out my hater blockers. I don't focus on no criticism. I'm going to eat my grapes. You know what I'm saying? That's how I'm going to go through each day. All right. It's a mindset. Of just who gives a damn what people think. That's my mindset. I don't care. Uh, I'm just going to do me every day and uh, keep pumping out these podcasts for you guys. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you the next one. I'm out of here. Get out.